and I just want to have a little chat about chlorine in tap water. No area is the same, but in general, there is chlorine in many town tap waters. I can only talk in experience for Sydney tap water. So it is worth inquiring about your tap water, but I will tell you about Sydney on the basis that many are just like this. Now back in the 80s or 90s, um, when, they, when I started keeping fish, they had a consistent amount of chlorine in tap water. But basically what they found is that over time, the amount of the, or the pathogens that were in the tap water started to increase because the pathogens would evolve and get used to the chlorine. Then they'd have to up the chlorine a bit. Then the pathogens would get used to the chlorine. Then they have to up the chlorine a little bit. Now what they do is they work on a maximum minimum level. Now one of my friends slash ex-employees works for Sydney Water. And his job is to go around to various checkpoints in the Sydney metro area and test the pathogen, potential pathogen count and chlorine level of the water. And basically, you've got the chlorine water source, then they will dose the, chlor the, the um, system with chlorine or chloramone. So then the chlorine, chloramone will go out into the system and basically filter the system and ensure that pathogens are not in our tap water. So, if you do a water change with your aquarium and you do not use water ager, chances are you'll be totally fine. But every now and then, as the dose goes through, you might do your water change then, as the bulk goes through it, and you might lose all your fish. And I get lots of people coming in my shop all the time, particularly old timers, and they say, I've been doing this with my pond for 30 years, and I've never had a problem. But he's come in because he had a problem. So what I'm here to tell you is that water ager is a safety precaution that is really worth taking. Because you can do the same thing many times and be lucky and there be very low levels of chlorine in the water and you not have a problem but there is that one day that happens every now and then where you just happen to do your water change at the same time that they've just topped up the chlorine or chloramone and bingo you've just wiped out all your bacteria capacity and you've just killed all your fish it does happen I regularly get customers come in that have forgotten to use water ager or have decided not to use water ager and all their fish are dead and they've got high ammonia. And it's just simply not worth taking the risk. So when they add chloramone to the water, the chloramone stays in solution for longer and then the chloramone will break down into chlorine and ammonia. Now we do sometimes test ammonia in our tap water and we also sometimes don't test ammonia in our water. It will depend where you are in the grid of the water board and it will depend how much chlorine or chloramone has been added to the water. So they add chloramone and then the chlorine is, does the best job so the, you'll have the higher concentration at the start of chloramone then as it goes out the chlorine ammonia bond will break, the chlorine will disinfect your tap water and um, the ammonia will be residual. So that does explain why sometimes I drink Sydney tap water. It's all good, tastes okay, it's all healthy. But then every now and then I will drink it and it will taste harsh and terrible. That means that I just happen to have um, drunk the water at the same time the chlorine, chloramone has gone into the water. So once again, my friend's job was going around to the various spots and he would test the pathogen count to make sure there's no pathogens in the water and report back. If they did start getting traces of pathogens, then the advice would go, then they would hit the chlorine again. And he would also test the chlorine at various places and send that information back so they could monitor 
the levels of chlorine versus the um, concentration of pathogens that may be in that water. Obviously aiming for zero. Now, if you do a small water change, the chlorine will diffuse through your system and you're probably not going to have a problem. If you do a real big water change, the chlorine will be more concentrated and you may have a big problem. I find in general a 10% water change without water, without water AG, you're pretty safe. But it is a bad habit. You are really better off putting the water ager in the bucket before you put the bucket into the aquarium and giving it a few seconds to work. Now there are also various different types of water agers on the market. My favourite are the mineral based water agers because the um, mineral based water agers are a natural and good type of water ager. They are a slow acting water ager. The reason why I love Easy Life is because it gives the water a type positive charge, but it is slow to work. So if you are going to use this water ager, only do 10% water changes, 15%, probably less than 20%, I would suggest, for this water ager. And put a big generous dose into the tank when you're finished. Make the water nice and cloudy. It'll clear crystal clear, give the water a type positive charge, help to hold in solution your good stuff and drop out of solution your bad stuff. Now the more common water agers are your chemical based water agers there's lots on the market get rid of chlorine chloramone all that sort of stuff various ones claim to do different things and claim to have different concentrations so just make a decision based on that the chemical water agers work real fast and they work straight away so if you put this if you put these into the water they don't work later on they basically just go in work and they're done so don't go thinking that you can add it to your tank, then fill your tank up and expect this to do anything. It doesn't do anything. It just works straight away and it doesn't just go for chlorine. It bonds to all different sorts of stuff. So it's best to add your chlorine, chloramone to the bucket, your, your um, remover to the bucket, then put the bucket in the tank. Now, if you are going to do the good old chuck some in as you go, as you fill the tank up, each time you dose it, as you fill the tank up a bit more, in order to have any efficiency whatsoever, you have to put a full dose for the full tank every time you do it. Because you can't just add the amount that you think you need for what you're adding and expect the um, unstable chemical to just find the chlorine and chloramine. It just doesn't work like that. It'll bond and stabilize off basically anything. So the end of the day if you have a garden pond if you have an aquarium it is a very good idea to either change only a small amount of water at a time or top up a small amount of water at a time or to treat your water before the water goes into the fish so the pond or the aquarium so every time i do a water change i will add a water ager I will also tend to use a carbonate powder, depending on your tap water. I will also tend to use a conditioning salt, which has trace elements and things that are good for my immune system. I will also occasionally add a bacteria. The other thing that would be good to know, particularly for you pond keepers, is if you go for this particular product here, it's a six in one test strip. It is the easiest, simplest, safest thing you could buy as an insurance policy for any aquarium or particularly pond because you can dip this little it's a little dipstick you dip it into the um, water and then you get it out and read it and you compare it to the colors and one of the um, tests that it does is chlorine so there are chlorine tests you can um, just check to see if you are getting chlorine out of your tap water so then you'll know how heavily to concentrate the um, amount of water age you're using so you pull a little strip out you compare the little strip let me show you the strip so that's what the strip looks like then you just compare the strip against the colors it's very, very easy to do. 
So you go along and the first one's pH, you just compare that. The next one is KH, then general hardness, then chlorine, then nitrite, then nitrate. It's a really simple, really quick, really effective um, test kit that anyone can use in two seconds flat to look after your fish without exerting any time, effort or energy in any way, shape or form. So I think getting these Easy Life test strips, the six in one ones that have the chlorine test in it is the best investment you can ever make and just do a regular test on it and ensure the safety of your fish. Anyway, if you've got anything else to add to um, to add your experience with chlorine or conditioning water or whatever you need to say, then make sure you add a little note on the bottom of this video. But I think the key is to make sure that every time you do a water change, I'll use a gravel cleaner and pull all the garbage out of the bottom of the gravel. Just show you what a gravel cleaner is. And I think the key is regular small water changes. As a fish advisor, that's a gravel cleaner. So as a fish advisor, I can't tell you how often I run into problems because people have changed too much water and they have shocked the fish, changed the water parameters, changed the temperature, and they're in trouble. So I would rather see you do a small regular water change than a big one. And for all you pond keepers, let me assure you that the dumbest thing you can ever do is turn your po hose on and give your pond a top up. Because very, very regularly, people come in to me and they say, all my fish are dead. I left the hose on. I've done it heaps of times. It was never a problem, but this time it's a problem. I was just topping up my, my tank, my pond, and then the phone rang. Then Aunt Bessie came over. And then the dog, I was chasing the cat. And then I had to run to the toilet and do a poo. And during all of that commotion, um, I forgot to turn the hose off and I left it running all night. And now all my fish are dead. So I wanna to suggest to everyone, do not run your hose straight into the pond. Get yourself a nice big bucket, treat the water in the bucket, then tip the bucket or the wheelie bin or whatever you want to use into the pond it is the safest advice i can ever give you